Hello, William here again, and thanks for joining me for this week's project video. Now, I think all woodturners, at some time or point in their careers, have encountered uh, some challenging pieces of wood that, because of a number of reasons, have proved to be uh, a seemingly impossible challenge to turn. Now, a common challenge, for me at least, uh, is sometimes obtaining a good surface uh, for finishing because of tear out caused by very soft or punky wood. I've encountered this a few times uh, and have sometimes given up on the project despite using razor sharp tools. I was recently confronted with such a problem uh, when I started to turn a, lidded, a lidded box for a project uh, only last week with some London plane that was well past its turn by date. Now, I ended up abandoning this project as I couldn't uh, achieve a starting point for sanding, as the wood was far too gone. Uh, in previous projects, uh, if you recall, I've used a very thin sanding sealer to stiffen up wood, um, particularly punky wood, uh, but in this case the surface tear out precluded this method. So, I ended up moving on to another project, but have since gone back to look at the wood again, just wondering what uh, could be done about it. In particular, this piece of wood uh, had some provenance, so I really wanted to save it somehow. So I set myself a bit of a task in coming up with an improvised filler which would help um, overcome this problem. Now I set myself some parameters for this improvised filler, which were, first of all, it had to be organic and therefore a natural substance. Uh, secondly, it had to be soluble in water um, if a solvent or a dilutant was required. Thirdly, it had to take a sanding sealer of all types. Uh, fourth, it had to take all forms of colourings, paints and stains. And lastly, it had to, of course, take all types of finish. Now, I didn't really look too hard for something available commercially, since an improvised solution uh, may have more appeal to turners. So I spent way, way too long researching the interweb to see if anything else had been made. I didn't find anything that really met most of my criteria, um, and I didn't find anything until I started searching in foreign languages. Now, when checking out some Russian leads, I found out that turners who make the uh, Russian dolls that fit inside each other, matryoshka dolls, uh, used potato, or what was described as potato, as a sanding sealer uh, over the finished wood before painting. Uh, from the video footage I saw, the potato both sealed the wood and provided a base for acrylic paint. Now, little information was available about what part of the potato uh, they were using, but it didn't take too long uh, or too much further research to point the finger at starch. Now, starch to me was something I used to use to stiffen my military uniforms, uh, but apparently it's an organic substance. Now, according to Wikipedia, starch is a polymetric carbohydrate consisting of a large number of glucose units joined by glycosidic bonds. Uh, the most common carbohydrate in human diet is contained in large amounts in staple foods uh, such as potatoes, wheat, uh, corn and rice. The word starch in fact is from a Germanic root uh, with the meaning of a strong, stiff, strengthen or to stiffen. Now in foodstuff of course uh, starch is commonly used as a thickener. Now an interesting characteristic of starch is that it's insoluble in alcohol or cold water but is soluble in warm or hot water. Uh, for those of you who know what Bisto is, you'll know exactly what I mean. Now, we've identified uh, potato starch as a probable contender since uh, it already meets uh, quite a few of our criteria. So the first issue uh, to tackle is how we get the starch out of the potato. Uh, the answer is very easy actually. All you need is to shred a potato and squeeze uh, the liquid from the potato. If you dry the liquid, the substance that is left behind is starch. 
uh, the rest of what's behind is in fact the potato. Now anyone that makes uh, homemade hash browns will already know this of course. Now rather than manufacturing your own potato starch you can just go and buy it commercially. Has the postman been today? Yes, the postman's been. There's a package from P. Escobar. No, I think it's from eBay. It's what I've been waiting for. So, a packet of uh, Tong Master's seasoning, potato starch, gluten-free. Gluten-free? 250 grams for the princely sum of £1.59. Now this is the offending piece of London Plain uh, which I aborted on a project two weeks ago. As you can see there are in fact a couple of pieces of wire there that I hadn't previously noticed but also this major area of very soft punky wood. So in this first simple test then I'm going to mix some potato starch with some uh, fairly warm water, fill the punky area of this piece of London Plain and let it dry and see what happens. Now I found that it's much easier to apply this uh, paste using your finger rather than some spatula or a spoon. Now the consistency seems to be about right and the paste seems to be uh, going into the punky timber and staying there. Now bearing in mind this paste is water based and it's quite thick in places I decided to try and accelerate the drying process by using a hot air gun. Now in Russia the makers of the Matryoshka dolls were in fact applying three coats of this uh, substance uh, over three days and allowing one day to dry between each coat. Now after some application of the hot air gun for about two and a half to three minutes at 300 degrees C the paste seems to have dried quite nicely but I noticed that it is in fact very powdery. Now normally of course we would do some abrasive work before we apply some sanding sealer but in this case I thought it would be a very good idea to apply thinned sanding sealer to this uh, dried paste in order to stiffen it up. Having given the thinned sanding sealer some time to set, I uh, can now revert back to doing some abrasive work, uh, adding sanding sealer again and then moving on to Yorkshire grit. Now in this first test I'm expecting the starch paste to leave some white patches where it's filled which will be a useful indicator of how successful or otherwise uh, we've been. And sure enough the white patches are quite visible uh, that resembles the white wood in spalting. So the next stage then is to apply some Yorkshire grit uh, to make sure that it takes it okay and actually I see no reason why it shouldn't. Now at this stage the finish feels quite normal and normally I would be happy to move right on to Hampshire Sheen High Gloss. However this is a trial and I'm going to turn off what I've done so far now and mix some more paste adding some sanding dust in order to try to match the colour of the piece. So having turned off what I've done so far, uh, in doing so I've revealed uh, another layer of very punky wood. I'm just going to mix some starch with the sanding dust and reapply it to the piece. Now my workshop is nice and warm today, it's 32 degrees in here and this has dried in about 10 to 15 minutes. So at this stage now I need to apply some thinner sanding sealer again to stiffen it up. 
Okay, so once the sanding sealer was dry, I'm sanding it back to 240 grit again and reapplying some sanding sealer and denimbing it. It's easy to see here that adding the sanding dust to the mixture actually makes a big difference. Okay, at this point I've suddenly realised that I've been waffling on for over 10 minutes, which is far longer than I really wanted to for part one. So, in this part I think I've established that starch, or at least potato starch, uh, is a viable organic filler. Um, this is, works especially well, particularly if you mix it with some sanding dust, uh, which can help you get a very good colour match. Now, like most of us, I've used all sorts of things as fillers, uh, including resins uh, and CA glue mixed with various fillers such as coffee grindings and so on. Now, I don't really like using CA glue because I personally find uh, difficult not to leave some telltale marks behind. So, I'm going to pursue this subject in part two. Uh, I'm not quite sure when that's going to be. Uh, and I will take a look at adding uh, stains and see how it takes the stains, the paints, and of course the final finish. Now at the end of this week, that's Friday, Saturday, 6th and 7th of September, I'll be attending, attending Yandel's show in Martock in Somerset, representing Yorkshire Grit. Now the Yandel's uh, woodworking show gets bigger and better each year, and this year we have uh, great names such as uh, Martin Saban Smith, John Clothier, Jim uh, Overton, and many other makers, so if you've got some time, do come along. Thanks for watching and hope to see you again next week.